let's talk about Justin Fields. Why does everyone think the second best quarterback in the draft is going to wind up being the fifth one taken? Skoski who knocks him down. Two yards short and Fields is still down. I've been doubted many times. Uh, I have no trouble going through hard times. This is what I'm hearing from around the league. They're saying that he's the last guy in and he's the first guy to leave. This brother dropped to arguably the fifth best quarterback. They had no chance. And the real question you hear from people is, does he have the work ethic? Can't get a straight answer. Does Justin Fields have what it takes to be a great quarterback? so-called experts, but I don't know where they get their expertise from. Narratives and the rumors and innuendo surrounding the NFL drafts, they can be smoke screens. Justin Fields falls, let's say. Uh, Justin Fields. Justin Fields. Justin Fields. Justin Fields. With the 11th pick, my Chicago Bears select Justin Fields, quarterback of Ohio State. I'm not going to take it personal. I'm going to just make those teams regret not choosing me. I know for a fact there's not 10 players better than me in the country. Make them pay for it. I'm Justin Fields. I go to Harrison High School in Kennesaw, Georgia. I would describe Kennesaw as a, you know, kind of a small town, uh, you know, in the suburb of Atlanta. Right here is a mural in uh, downtown Kennesaw. It's definitely cool having this mural just to have, you know, when kids walk by or drive by and see it and, you know, they say, I want to be like that kid one day. It's a great town, great community, and, you know, it's home for me. There goes my dad right there driving by. I like Lever to Beaver Town. It's just a small town, especially in the sports world. Everybody knows each other. A lot of people know who you are. A lot of people know each other. That was one of the draws to moving to that side of town. You know, um, my husband really wanted the kids to be able to have that experience. And so you, you know, got it where the whole town would come out at football games. It was like a, a family outing, really, for us. Pretty much where it all started. Right over there, we were playing East Party. I was going crazy that game. The kid would watch like Mike, no lie. 12 times a day. You thought it was Michael Jordan. Harrison, it's definitely been a great, you know, school to me and, you know, the community uh, of Kennesaw has just been awesome with the uh, support. So definitely for, you know, grateful for all the relationships that I built there. And pulling up to the school, just got here. Get some throwing in with old high school teammate, Darius Clark. My man's just won a national championship at Lindsey Wilson College. Good. Where are you living? Uh, I'm here right now, but I'm, I'm up in Chicago. I just bought a house up there. So. My house? Yeah. Well, I sat on the field, comes with a fat mustache. That mustache you got right here, <laughs> it was the same size as seventh grade. My whole family is athletic. You know, it's always been sports as our like main activity where other people maybe might do music or art. It's just that's what we've enjoyed most, so that's what we've done our entire lives. I went to a gym once, and the cheerleading coach was there, and there's a bunch of parents around, and, uh, and I had my daughter with me, and the cheerleading coach asked, uh, hey, you want to sign your daughter up for cheerleading? And I was like, uh, no, my daughters play sports. The gym got quiet, and I, I'll never make that mistake again. It's just kind of a way of life for them. They grew up competing every day at home with their siblings. You're not a basketball player, this is a basketball court. And I'm gonna start heating up. I always challenged him when he was young. I play classical music in the crib, you know, and even before he was born, because I say that that expands the brain and renews parts of the brain that you typically wouldn't use. So I'll take some credit for that. <laughs> 
I'm LeBron James and Steph Curry. Big together in one. I really need a man's ball. That's why my shot's not going in. Obviously, he's very competitive. Restarted because I won that one. Chris, I, I hit it the first ball. time. We'll see if I can do it again. Automatic. Bingo. Come on, now stop playing with me. Stop playing with me, man. <laughs> Bro, you can't count. You need to go back to school, my boy. I'm not gonna lie, like, I was more the tougher one and he was the crybaby if he had lost a game or something like that. Every time he got hit, he cried. She beat me 2-1, but you already know as a big brother, I have to let her win, mm. just to keep her confidence up. No, so, you should have heard him before. You know. He's talking all kinds of stuff. He was only three then. You know, we were doing the wiffle ball thing. One day, I walked over to the park and said, hey, you know, can my son play? Well, he was as big as these five and six-year-olds. Matter of fact, my girlfriend used to call him Little Debo. He wasn't fat, but he was a little meaty dude. And he was big, right? He got on his first baseball team at three and a half, and he was hitting it out to the fence. He would beat the other kids by like 10 yards. And I was like, these kids are non-athletic. I mean, what? I, I didn't realize he was uh, special. There you go. There you go. Yes, sir. Oh! Yes, sir. Look, there you man, go. bro. There you God go. on your side there today. You Justin being you know, a really good athlete, wanting to play quarterback. What do you love about the position of quarterback so much? I love the control, the competitiveness. I'd heard all the cliches, especially about the African-American quarterback. He's raw. He's a project. They can't read things of that nature. So if he was going to play that position, I wanted him to do it with excellence. I'm trying to get these guys right. I'm trying to. This is JV. JV. So that. I'm proud of you, man. Appreciate it. I met Justin at a, a football camp at Walton High School. He was roughly around in the sixth grade. A little stocky kid, real athletic, could throw really well, move well, but um, he was still raw. He was a raw athlete. And his dad went fraternity brothers on Mega Sci Fi. So that, that made it easier for us to get along and start a um, relationship from there. You know, another trainer wouldn't have came to my house, picked my kid up, took him to train. He trusted me with his son, so we took it from there. Coach Ville, me and him have been working since the end of my sixth grade year. He's made me into a quarterback, especially a passer, because all I remember, you know, my sixth grade years running the ball, like literally not passing at all. In seventh grade, um, I, I started passing the ball way more, so he definitely got my fundamentals right and, you know, kind of got me on that right track to become a top quarterback. Him being transparent with Justin's ability or lack thereof or what he needed to work on really helped. Around about the same time, Trevor, I met him in the seventh grade at a camp I was doing at Lasseter High School. His dad and a guy by the name of Eddie Prince introduced me to each other, and they said, you need to get with this young man. There's always gonna be somebody saying that, you know, Trevor's better than me, and we, of course, grown up about 20, 30 minutes away from each other. And Them having each other, you know, so close, him being in Cartersville, them being able to push each other was definitely a great benefit for the both of them. Trevor's a great quarterback, you know, pushed me uh, to be better every time we worked out. You know, of course, you know, every throw that he threw. I think, you know, just that, you know, back and forth competition is going to make, you know, both of us better. And, you know, it, it did. And seeing him do his thing on the field, it, it pushes me to, you know, go, go harder and uh, be better. Trevor Lawrence was, was sort of the golden boy. He started as a freshman and won multiple state championships. Tall, strong-armed, prototypical quarterback. Trevor was out the box a little earlier because Trevor got to play in the ninth grade on the varsity. So I, that gave him a little bit more varsity experience. It isn't just about game day. It's everything they don't see. Early mornings, late at night, my grind is different. They'll hear my name on Sundays. Let's work. My sophomore year, I didn't really have any uh, offers. We worked a ton on him not leaving the pocket early, but when you're that athletic and you have that kind of running ability, it's kind of hard to put that kid in that box and say, stay, stay, stay. So during the season, I would start off the game usually, and by the third or fourth drive of the game, I would get taken out just because I was struggling. That was a, of course, tough time for me. His sophomore year was when he was really growing into that growth spurt. 
where he like hit three and a half inches over the course of a summer. And then he was really kind of getting used to his new body, right? So his mechanics were kind of off. Being an athlete, you have to have complete control of your body. So when I kind of hit that growth spurt late, it was new to me. Tell me a little bit about your season last year as a junior. Uh, last year as a junior, I really kind of, I think that's where I grew more. Sophomore year wasn't the best year, but uh, last year I kind of, you know, developed more as a quarterback. All I can tell you is the first book that he ever read at three and a half. I got at the Kroger, I'll never forget. It was at the checkout stand. The name of it was God Made Me Special. I guess he took that and ran with it, right? <laughs> Eventually, I got the hang of things. Going to those Friday night games and, you know, wearing that number one on my cheek, you know, how girls would paint their face. It was so exciting. I remember him being the best. Over the years, he's learning that when things broke, he was able to make plays. Anderson dies, can't make the tackle, fields, walks into the end zone on the near and his legs was able to make home run hits because he can go get 60, 70 yards easily. I've had the opportunity to help many of the best quarterbacks in the world become a little bit better. Justin's strongest skill set at that age was just his ability to manipulate the football. There's not many kids who could throw the football with that much pace and energy um, at that young of an age, and that's something you can't really teach. I am as a person, just the even killed. I, I really don't get too excited. I just try to stay uh, neutral and um, just kind of, I guess, just just be who I am and be within myself. I'm gonna start over because I, I feel like I need more energy. The first ranking is released prior to a class's sophomore season. Within that process is the fact-finding mission, height, weight, speed, you're trying to talk to coaches, you're trying to see guys compete in whatever settings you can. I was committed to Penn State my sophomore year. I committed there after I got, you know, some SEC offers. I knew that I most likely wasn't going to go to Penn State, so I just decommitted from them. And then, of course, I kind of went through that recruiting process again. For a quarterback, it's such a complex position. You know, if you're accurate in high school, you're gonna be accurate in college. You should dominate the competition in high school, no matter what classification you play in. And when you're the best player on the field, at the most important position on the field, we should know it. Trevor Lawrence was our number one guy from the beginning. The Justin Fields phenomena took shape a little bit later. As his junior season progresses, you're seeing him start to really put on tape what, what it's supposed to look like. He just sort of knocked the door down of the rankings process. 24 of the top high school quarterbacks in the nation will arrive in Los Angeles to compete for a spot in the Elite 11. Elite 11 is the most prestigious uh, high school quarterback camp in all of the country. We get together between 20 and 24 of the best high school quarterbacks in the country, and we drill that down to 11. I mean, and from that 11, there's one MVP who is selected from that group. This is the most talented group we've ever had. You're the biggest, you're the fastest, you're the strongest. You go through a series of tests to find out who would be the top quarterback in their country. So Trevor and Justin battled for that as well. Everybody pretty much had Trevor winning it going number one. And of course, I mean, he was a number one recruit at the time. What do you think it is that is going to help you separate from the rest of the pack at the Elite 11 Finals? I would just say how much, uh, how much I work, how hard I work. I was treating like a, a huge deal. My goal there was just to win. It wasn't to you know go and make friends. It wasn't to enjoy the experience. It was just to get better. And I wasn't focused on 
necessarily talking and getting to know the other quarterbacks. I could have really cared less, to be honest with you. I remember a conversation I had with him in his room, and he was studying the playbook that they had sent him. I was like, man, that's good. It's a good job making it. You know, don't put too much pressure on yourself in this. He says, you don't understand. I'm going to win this. He is so laser focused. It's like there's something in him that I've never seen before. Son, it's OK. You, you, you made it. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. And he kind of snapped at me. I'm going to win this. You, you don't know how hard I compete. I just remember telling his dad, I was like, you just don't understand what's happening right now. He's not going home without winning this whole thing. I feel like I'm one of the hardest workers that you'll ever meet. When you get around him and you see him in his element, you quickly become aware that he is the alpha. Out the gate, sir. He is there to stake claim to whatever it is he wants. He was determined to dispel the Trevor's better than me narrative. That was his goal, and it was just like a man possessed. The scene is a two-man race. It's between you two. When it comes to MVP, you guys both made it very clear you guys wanted to win it. You've separated yourself. It's not just how you play. It's how you handle the up and downs. It's how you handle your team. It's how you handle the bigness of this. Good luck. All right, have a great one. Good luck, Justin was 17 at the time he was displaying this level of leadership. Right, and that's so uncommon to be not only comfortable enough to get guys to do things, but be comfortable in your own skin. You see guys come in and you look and like, all right, who really wants to win this? And then that was Justin. Go, 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 go. And then you're like, okay, who's really talented? And you're like, Justin's the most talented one. I think he has that gift. The, the offense under Justin Fields at quarterback scored on 71% of the times he had the ball. It, it sounds impressive, but when you contrast it to what the rest of the group was, again, these are the best quarterbacks in the country. On average, the rest of the group scored on 29% of their drives. I mean, this was just a guy that had total and complete control over that event. And for him to go out there and, and look that much better than everyone else in the country, it, it was remarkable. He was able to show his full range of talents there. His intelligence, his ability to pick up a playbook, his accuracy, his throwing to different receivers on time and anticipation. We got a bunch of big personalities. We got the best skill position players there, and they're coming out and, and catching passes for him. And they, like, rallied around Justin, his energy, his presence, um, his charisma. Getting to meet, you know, future NFL stars. It's like, uh, one team is a little overmatched, and, you know, they, this quarterback is throwing dimes. Learning from, you know, past quarterbacks that have been in the same shoes that, that I was in and just learning their stories and, you know, learning from their mistakes. I mean, I've been to just about every Elite 11 for the last 15 years. Jameis Winston and Deshaun Watson and Tua Tungavailoa. Justin Fields was above them all. Congratulations, buddy. We've got a smash concept this play. Cut. Drive back in the pocket, stay patient, eyes down the field, he breaks free. Complete the ball, touchdown. That's how we do it. Coming into today, what were your goals? You know, my goals were, of course, getting the MVP and making it to LA. It's always been a dream of mine. He literally left Elite 11, and every school in the country wanted him at the conclusion of that week. I think it kind of just shocked everyone. It, it just became clear that this was a guy that was going to be the story in recruiting. Looks like my dream has come true. That kind of created almost a meteoric rise in the way people looked at him in terms of his quarterback talent and, and the effect that he would have on a college program. Thank God the mail wasn't coming to my house. It was coming to his dad's house, right where they were flooded. We got so much mail. If we went a couple days without checking the mailbox, it would just be stuffed. Sometimes the mailman would, you know, 
come up to the front door and just bring us stuff because we had so much. That's the kind of year I blew up. I was just getting offers from like SEC schools, like Alabama, Auburn, Georgia. Being a kid from Georgia, I was too caught up in like, how would people look at you if you went to Georgia? Like you would be a, a god. All right, Justin, why Georgia? His sister had already committed there, so there were a lot of things pulling him there, along with the fact that, you know, it's SEC, you know, the most competitive conference in football. I definitely never saw myself being in this position where I am right now. So all those things, all those boxes were being checked off, right? I pretty much decided that I wanted to stay closer to home, closer to my family. The school was awesome. I liked all the uh, other recruits in my class, so I was trying to, you know, of course, recruit the best players in the country to come to Georgia. I'm already hitting guys up, telling them to come and join me because I want the best players to play with me. This is a guy that can play as a freshman. This is a guy that can help you as a freshman. And in fact, if you get him on the field as a freshman, you're probably going to end up winning a national championship somewhere along the way. I have to say to the Georgia fans is that uh, the future is going to be crazy, so hold on to your seats. That made it all the more shocking when he went and decided, you know what, I'm going to go try to win a job and beat Jake Fromm out. At that stage, Jake Fromm was going to be a really hard guy to beat out. Um, the guy wasn't blinking. They said, okay, you know that's going to be a tough battle, but you like competition. He's like, I'm, I'm going to compete for the position, and, and that's what you go to school for. He said, I don't want them to give me anything. Justin, what separates you from the rest of the quarterbacks at Georgia now? Uh, I mean, uh, it's pretty obvious. I just feel like I bring another uh, aspect to the game with my legs. Now it's Fields, touchdown dogs. Justin's decision to go to Georgia confused me a little bit, right? I, I didn't understand it at first, but then when you talk to him, you understood it was his, his competitive nature. I'm not afraid of a challenge, and uh, I know at the end of the day, it's just gonna make me a better player. He saw a job that he felt like he could and should win. Fields takes the hit, throws the touchdown. I just remember in the living room at his dad's house when the staff came. I asked Kirby one question. I said, name one coach that has ever replaced a starting quarterback who's got a winning record, just one. Because you're telling me and, and everybody that he's going to get a fair chance. So just name one that where that scenario happened, because in my mind, I don't believe that's gonna happen. That was my one question and he couldn't answer it. Coach Smart, I mean, he hasn't promised me any playing time. The only thing he's promised me is he's gonna play the best player. That, I mean, that's really the only promise. Uh, I want. And it's a fake. Justin Fields. Oh my gosh. It was fourth and 11. They had no chance. Justin Fields is a more talented player than Jake Fromm, but I, I understand the, the predicament that Kirby Smart was in because it, it, it's hard to pull the plug on a guy that's been as, as rock steady as Jake Fromm was. His first year for me, it was, was pretty stressful. You know, you hear the best will play, you'll get a fair shot. I knew he could compete on that level, so I just wanted him to uh, play much like I was looking at the Clemson games. So we kind of, you know, would look at that and, you know, wanted the same thing. Don't think it was ideal for me in terms of, you know, playing time and some things that happen at the school. For you can count on begins with an incident unfolding at the University of Georgia involving a former local baseball star. A former Greenbrier High School baseball player is being accused of shouting racial slurs at a football game after a student posts her concerns on Facebook. University of Georgia is investigating that story now. Trying to build a program on tolerance and mutual respect. And you can't control what other people say, but you know, the expectation is that people are part of our program 
attending our games to share the same beliefs that we do. Sad that, that, that something like this would happen. You handle it the right way. You handle it professionally, and the school took action against the person who did it. Just going through that, it, it definitely helped me as a person and um, as a football player for sure. Georgia was a testament to his maturity. You got to think about how tough that is for somebody going through that situation. I'll get the Justin Fields question out of the day. Has he informed you guys he intends to transfer? I think he's looking at his options. There were a lot of question marks, and you know, of course, I wasn't getting uh, the amount of playing time that I. Thought I would. I think he just wanted to be somewhere where he felt comfortable. That would give him the best opportunity to mature as a man and mature as a football player. And he found that. So that's why I pretty much decided to uh, look for new schools. Justin Fields is exploring the option of transferring from Georgia.